If any of us have been paying any attention at all, be very much aware that God's ways are not our ways. In fact, God's ways are so far beyond our ways that to even talk about God is almost impossible. Pope St. Gregory the Great, he said, almost anything said of God is unworthy for the reason it is said. And St. Gregory Nazianzen, he once said, to speak about God is like trying to cross the ocean in a little raft or fly to the moon on little bird wings. But Jesus tells us in our gospel today, go therefore and make disciples of all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is telling all of us to participate in the very nature and mission of God. So how do we pull that off? Well, as you all know, because you've heard this many times before, God is love. But what does that really mean when you get right down to it? Since love isn't fully love until you give it away, so you have to have the reception of love, but then you have to be the giving away of it, the Father, he takes everything he is, everything he has, his whole being, his very nature, and gives it to the Son in an act of perfect love. That's why one of the reasons why we say in the Creed on Sunday Mass that Jesus is consubstantial with the Father, Jesus is the very same substance of the Father. The Son then in return takes everything he is, everything he has, his whole being, his very nature, and gives it back to the Father, another act of perfect love. And from that relationship, love given, love received, love given back, proceeds the Holy Spirit, who also is love. So all three persons are bound together in this love. This is what we as Catholics call God. And this is what we're celebrating today on this feast of the most blessed Trinity. Here's the great news, though. God wants you to share in that divine love, the whole wonderful love of the Trinity, and not just until Mass is over with, but for all eternity, guys, all eternity. That's why the second person of the Blessed Trinity became human, suffered, died, and ascended back into heaven. That's also why God sends the Holy Spirit to us in the sacraments. So when we're baptized into the life of God, the life of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we receive a spirit of adoption that makes all of us children of God and allows us to call God Abba, which as you all know means Daddy. Let that sink in. The Almighty One, the One who made everything, is your Daddy. So what Jesus is by nature, we are by adoption. In other words, Jesus, simply because of who he is, is the Son of the Father. But we are daughters and sons of the Father through adoption. And what were the adoption papers, so to speak? Baptism. That's why baptism is so very, very important. Because thus, we have a destiny to share forever the divine life of God. It's an unbelievably precious gift that even the highest of the angels can't share because the angels do not have a body that shares in the very divinity of Jesus Christ. Now, all this theological stuff might sound pretty good. It's okay, Father, I'm kind of sort of with you here, all right? But what does this have to do with me, practically speaking? What does this deep theological mystery have to do with the fact, Father, I still don't have a decent job. My spouse and I, we haven't talked all week. Yeah, another one of the kids isn't, isn't going to Mass anymore. And my diabetes is all out of control here. What am I supposed to be doing? It all has to do with perspective. See, so very, very often we look at our troubles from an earthly view, not from a heavenly perspective. You know, I remember being a kid, a little kid, okay, and we were downtown here for the Christmas parade. I, I couldn't see a thing, man. But my dad, he picked me up and put me on, on his shoulders. Like a whole world opened up to me. He's like, wow, look at all this. It was awesome. So here's the point. If you are an adopted son or daughter of God, and you are if you're baptized, if God is your Abba, your daddy, well then have him pick you up. Have him pick you up to see things from a much greater perspective. Now I'm being serious here, guys. Quit pretending you're this big, bad, totally self-reliant adult and admit you're still a child of God. 
I don't care how many gray hairs you got, you're still his kid. And sometimes you can't see because of what other people have done or because of our selfishness or sinfulness, sometimes we can't see. Let him pick you up so you can see as God sees with his very own eyes. As we want to understand the true meaning of the Holy Trinity, we have to change our view. We need to start seeing things from an eschatological perspective. Okay, well, what did you just say, Father? Es that was like six syllables, man. What are you talking about there, okay? Eschatology is just a fancy word that refers to the last things. Death, judgment, heaven, or hell. Now, yes, it's great, necessary to be able to see God's hand in the present moment. And true, we can't be stuck in things of the past. We also have to be able to see where we're going, to see the end, the ultimate end, the ultimate goal of everything. So the Holy Trinity, the Mass, all the sacraments, our whole faith makes very little sense without this eschatological perspective. We have to be able to see the possibilities of where we're going. That's why Blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati, the young Italian outdoorsman, he, he died back in 1925 at the age of only 24. Now, although he was young, he was very wise. He lived his life in this type of perspective, in that he looked death squarely in the face and it did not steal from him. That's why he once wrote, it's beautiful to live because our real life lies beyond. Otherwise, who could bear the burden of this life if there were no eternal joy as the prize for suffering? So when we look at the Mass, or the other sacraments, or even the Trinity itself, and if you only say, how is this going to benefit me here and now, you lose the whole point of the sacraments. The sacraments, especially the Eucharist given to us in the Mass, is not an end in themselves. They are the greatest of means to the greatest of ends. Or in other words, the sacraments are the greatest of journeys to the greatest of destinations. Life in the Holy Trinity, which of course is just another way of saying heaven. But you know, so very often we don't have these lofty sorts of thoughts, do we? You see, if we try to compare what's going on at Mass with a movie or a football game without this eschatological perspective, without thinking about what is awaiting us, well, the Mass is going to lose out. Like, how many people can sit through an entire two-and-a-half-hour movie but can't sit through Mass that lasts over an hour? It's like, so many people have this built-in computer chip, okay? And as soon as Mass hits 61 minutes, Oh no, something's wrong, something's wrong here, okay? How come if a football game goes into overtime, overtime, everybody's glued to their seats, don't want to miss a single moment? Yeah, when the homily exceeds 15 minutes, I get all this coughing and pointing at the watches, uh hum, uh hum. <laughs> when we understand that the holy sacrifice of the Mass is the means to our ultimate purpose of eternal life at the Most Holy Trinity, it's anything but boring. When we realize that because of our baptism into the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we can participate here and now in the life of the Trinity by partaking of the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, Mass is anything but boring. The Holy Sacrifice of the Mass should bring us to tears because of the love that God has revealed to us. If you're not seeing it, you have to change your perspective. St. John Vianney once said, there's nothing so great as the Eucharist. If God has something more precious, he would have given it to us. And St. Padre Pio said, it would be easier for the world to survive without the sun than to do without Holy Mass. That quote is profound. The entire cosmos is sustained by the holy sacrifice of the Mass, all done through the working of the Holy Trinity. But your moment of divine enlightenment, that moment when everything kind of makes sense about all of what's going on here, it could be something quite simple but still profound. 
You know, as one priest, he shared this beautiful story. One time during a Sunday mass, a little boy got loose from his pew. It's like, oh, we, we got a runner. We got a runner here, okay? And he began running down the aisle straight toward the sanctuary where the priest was seated. And the little boy, as he was running toward the priest, kept yelling out, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. And when the priest saw the little boy running towards him, and especially when he heard what he was saying, the boy was seeing something else, wasn't he? And the priest realized that. It changed his whole viewpoint of his priesthood and also of the mass. That little kid saw what we're supposed to see. So once we realize that though we are here in this life, and this life can be very blessed, we're actually made for heaven. Once we develop this eschatological perspective, once we realize our true home is in heaven, our true destiny is to share in the life of the Trinity, well then maybe we too will one day come running into Mass, looking for our heavenly daddy, asking him to pick us up and give us a sense of the great and blessed life that is to come. <laughs>